seven years ago when I decided to meet with a spiritual director for the very first time. And, and if you have read the book, Catherine really fills that role of someone else who's prayerfully alongside of your life, listening to your life with God, encouraging you in prayer, helping you to notice how you're responding to God or where you're afraid, where you're resisting. And um, I went to the spiritual director for the very first time and not knowing anything about spiritual direction, I assumed that she would be assigning me um, the spiritual discipline to practice. And I assumed that she would give me uh, the really unpleasant one, like fasting. And so I went to him <laughs> expecting to be assigned fasting. And instead she listens to my story and she said at the end, oh, Sharon, I, I sense that God is inviting you and I thought you're going to celebrate, to practice celebration. Like, what are you talking about? What does that even mean? And she said, you have taken such care in your relationship with God. You have tried to be so faithful. I just sense that God is inviting you to practice receiving his love and celebrating that love. So practice celebration. So I went home as a good student. I pulled out the two foster celebration of discipline, which I had read many times. The one thing that um, drives my husband crazy, I'm an avid bookmark upper. So I have everything from vertical lines or stars, stars with circles or exclamation points. Or if, it, if it's really, really interesting, I'll circle the page over the top with an arrow pointing down that says, wow! You <laughs> <laughs> won't read any books that I've read if I've marked them. He finds it very distracting. I don't understand that at all. <laughs> so I opened up the book and I began to read. And there were my marks in every chapter as I went through. Even the chapter on fasting, no stars or gods, but they were vertical lines. <laughs> and then I opened up the chapter. There's a chapter on celebration in that book. I know, go figure. There wasn't a single mark in the entire chapter. There wasn't a single chapter in the entire book. And I looked at it thinking, did I read this chapter? And then I felt so delightfully busted by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I knew exactly what I needed to practice. What does it mean to begin to practice the yes, the flower is for me? Yes, I love you. And you can rejoice in my extravagant love. And friends, that's my heart's desire for each one of you, that you begin to rest in the love of God. Let me finish um, by telling a story and then by showing a picture. I don't remember who to give credit to. It was an author. I read it years ago. He talked about uh, traveling to Ireland, and he was in a bed and breakfast. And he looked out on the beach on the beach one day, and there was an elderly man dancing by himself with a bandit on the beach. Later that day, they happened to run into each other in the lobby, and the author said, "Are you the man I saw dancing on the beach?" And the man said, "Oh, yes." Yeah. The father is awfully fond of A couple of weeks ago, a friend came to me. She said, Sharon, I, I saw this picture. It was a friend of hers who had painted it. I saw this, and I thought of you. I want to share the image with you. I hope you all can see it. There are flowers, fields of flowers, and a girl dancing. Can you see what's holding her? It's a hand. It's the hand of God holding her as she dances. It's moonlight. It's dark. It's called dancing in the dark. I wrote to her an email thanking her for the painting and how much it had spoken to me. She told me that it emerged during a season when she was practicing spiritual discipline called Blessing and Divina and centering prayer and walking the ladder and praying with imagination. And she was praying one day and she saw a picture. It was a dark and difficult season in her life. She saw a hand held vertically, and she was desperately trying to climb this hand as though she were a rock climber, and it was a slippery cliff where she could not find her footing. And she realized that was how she felt about her relationship with God. This was the hand held this way, and she couldn't find a place to stand. And as she prayed, she realized that Jesus was saying, oh, honey, no. Not this way. This way. You are safely held. Lavishly loved. And beyond that, we are held with a wounded hand, aren't we? Yes. The deepest evidence of the love of God is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The cross is the reminder of the price that we pay. Mm -hmm. If we ever doubt the love of God, friends, we turn to the cross. That's where it's finally settled. You are held in a wounded 
hand and are we free to dance and enjoy that the flowers really are for us? Let's pray together. Lord, your love is uncontainable. It is inexpressible, and yet you have shown it to us in Jesus. I pray that if each one of us would have the courage to say yes to all of your invitations to travel deep into your heart, to know the height and length and depth and breadth of your love, which is unknowable, and yet we glimpse it through Jesus. Lord, do in us and for us and through us things that only you can get the credit and the glory for. We long to receive your love and rest in it and then respond to it by loving not only you but your world in return. But let it begin even now, O oh Lord, with a deeper yes in our own spirit. Guide us into the practices, the holy habits that will bring us into your presence and intention.